program were strictly those of its hosts, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of this station, its staff, management, or sponsors. This is Health and Wealth Radio, AM 1470, WWNN Pompano Beach, and WKIS HD3, Boca Raton, Miami, Fort Lauderdale. Attention men over 26, listen carefully. A very important study on ejaculation is being conducted. If you are experiencing the following symptoms, weak, slow, or delayed ejaculation, or low volume of ejaculate, or the complete inability to ejaculate, you may qualify for an important research study. You must be suffering from low testosterone levels to be considered. If you have not had your testosterone levels checked, it will be done as part of the research study. Premature ejaculation is not part of the research and is excluded. The study is done in private and takes place over several months. All study testing and medications will be paid for by the sponsor. You may be compensated for your time. Remember, we are looking for men with low testosterone and ejaculation problems. If you would like more information or to be considered, please contact 3H Clinical Research Corporation at 954-755-3801. If you are suffering from ejaculation problems, you may qualify for important research. Please call 3H Clinical Research Corporation, 954-755-3801. AM 1470 WNN. Listen live at WWNNradio.com and like us on Facebook. Search AM 1470 WWNN. The opinions expressed on the following sponsored program are strictly those of the host, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of this station, its staff, management, or sponsors. Welcome to the Know Nothing Show with Alan Elkin and Rich Friedman, who have been in the legal profession for over 30 years and now want to share their experience and knowledge with you, the public. Hey, maybe they do know a little about something. Join Alan and Rich by calling in at 888-565-1470 or watching them on elkinsandfriedman.com on Monday nights. Good day, everybody. I should say happy Memorial Day to everybody out there. Uh, how are you doing tonight, Richard? Oh, very, very good, but we really shouldn't call it Happy Memorial Day. It's a very, you know, solemn holiday, and uh, we need to remember our uh, uh, so- soldiers from the past that have given their life to, to keep us free. You're right. Thank you for slapping me down and correcting me the, right out of the box, Richard. <laughs> hey, we've been partners over 30 years, so I'm used to it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Let me ask you something. You know, I was doing a little research on Memorial Day, and we have a very esteemed guest that's going to join us in just a moment, whose name is Norman Kent. He's a practicing attorney in the uh, Fort Lauderdale area. Brilliant guy. I've known him for probably over 20 years. He's nice enough to uh, be on hold. And then, Norm, I know you're on hold, so hold on for a minute. Richard. Did you know that Memorial Day hasn't always been Memorial Day? It was formerly known as Decoration Day. I didn't know that. When did it switch names from Decoration Day to Memorial Day? Well, let's see here. It says that it originated during the time of the Civil War to commemorate the Union and Confederate soldiers who died in the Civil War. By the 20th century, Memorial Day had been extended to honor all Americans who died in military service. And uh, I believe that the answer to that became common usage after World War II. So I never knew that. That's very interesting. Thanks for bringing that to our attention. Well, you're quite welcome, (laughs) sir. All right. As I I said, we have an esteemed guest on the line who's kind enough to uh, join us. And uh, I must say, I I know for a fact that this guy's some traveler. When I called him, he was going to Chicago for the weekend. Instead of coming home, being the jet setter that he is, he he went to California. And I think he's, uh, he's calling us right now from there. Are you there, Mr. Kent? I am in Southern California. How are you doing? Great, Norm. May I call you Norm? I know formally it's sure. Norman Elliot Kent. Now, I've been using the name Norm for quite a few years. Go right ahead. Can I just have one question? Where in California are you? Southern California right now. Going to the uh, Dodgers and Angels game tonight. Oh, great. Great. Have a good time. And you're probably a, a uh, New York fan, Norm. I know from uh, from your bio here that uh, New York born and raised, went to uh, Hofstra University, undergrad and grad school, did you not? Yeah, I talk about uh, Hofstra being the Harvard of Hempstead, but I, I did grow up on Long Island playing ball at uh, Hofstra and uh, wound up uh, in my legal career doing work for the Dodgers in Vero Beach. So I had a 
interesting career in that regard. Well, well, you have. Now, I said I've known you for a long time, and I remember you. You were actually, besides practicing law, you owned a, uh, a baseball memorabilia store, didn't you? Well, we all have different businesses during the course of our lifetime, and that was one of the ones I owned, uh, Baseball Heaven. It was a memorabilia shop in uh, the Gateway Shopping Center. Uh, on Sunrise Boulevard in Fort Lauderdale. I recall that being from about 1988 to 92, so you have a good memory. Well, you know, it's funny because uh, as a frustrating practicing lawyer like you, I owned an animation gallery at one time. It always seems like the grass is greener, but what can I say? This is all I, I know how to do. <laughs> and the hair is grayer. Well, I, re I remember that the uh, gallery was beautiful, and I used to sell uh, animated baseball art signed by ball players, so there was a, a common ground there. Memorabilia when you walk into people's homes is something that recalls the past and puts a smile on their uh, on their heart and a song and a song in their heart and a smile on their lips. You know, Norm, you know, I got to tell you, you know, those that recognize your name know you also being a successful radio talk show host for a long period of time. And I got to tell you, I used to listen to you and I used to marvel. You were one of the most articulate individuals. I don't know if you've slipped since then, but you used to be a really articulate guy on the air. I guess your audience will be able to judge that after listening to me today. But uh, the experiences I had as a talk radio show host for over a decade in Fort Lauderdale were the cherished experiences that I relish tremendously and I love doing it and I'm more than happy occasionally to fill in now and then as guest host and uh, answer questions to other people that are willing to be so spontaneous as to put their name and reputation on the line. You know, there's no vacation in talk radio, you can't fill the air with dead space. You have to be entertaining and compelling to listen to, or you lose the audience instantly. And as a as a lawyer who represents other lawyers in the First Amendment, I wound up representing radio talk show hosts like Neil Rogers and Steve Kane and Phil Hendry and Al Rantel and others in local media that went on to national success. And during the course of that time, I was invited to host radio shows myself and. I love the morning drive show that I did. I think I did for about eight years on WFTL. Well, that's terrific. Now, uh, you're still in practice in the Fort Lauderdale area, and I know, why don't you tell the audience, uh, give yourself a plug, what type of law are you practicing these days? Well, I'm still a criminal defense and constitutional rights attorney, and uh, in those cases where people are being unjustly prosecuted or wrongly arrested or falsely accused, I'm willing to step up to the plate and uh, stand up for their rights. Uh, mostly, right now, I've, uh, in the course of 25 years, seen that occur to people that uh, use marijuana. So uh, there are 20 states now that have decriminalized marijuana. It never should have been illegal. People are wrongly and unjustly still going to jail for that. Florida is one of the states where we have a legalization petition going forth for the first time for medically necessary uses for patients that uh, have it. And gay rights also has been a cause I've espoused for decades because it's it's wrong that citizens who should be treated equally are given different footing. And it's, it's as simple as a personal freedom issue. It's yeah, really I, I totally to agree with it's you. As a matter of fact, I'm reading from Wikipedia that not only are you an advocate for the marijuana reform, but you also, at least you had served as chairman of the board of the National Organization for Reform of Marijuana Laws. Yeah, actually, that's what I do now, and I, I'm on my way to Aspen, Colorado from here to uh, lecture at the National Organization for Reform Marijuana Laws annual legal conference. We actually have it at the home of uh, Hunter Thompson, who right. you might remember was a phenomenal author and incredible writer. He was the uh, focus of the show Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, which was made into a movie starring Johnny Depp once and Bill Murray another time. He's a great writer, lectured often in South Florida. And uh, his home, Al Farm, is one of the places we host a reception at later this week.
Uh, all right. You know, we, we had a little hum in the phone there, uh, but I could hear you fine, and it has cleared yeah. up. Uh, the, the reason that I thought to call you today is because there was a, a, a case in the uh, news last week, and as uh, and an attorney, you know, it, it hits pretty close to home. And what it has to do with is the Florida Bar investigating an attorney by the name of William uh, uh, Gellin, who, uh, for those practicing attorneys, essentially was the individual behind a blog where one could go on and, uh, and candidly write opinions as to the judiciary in, in both, I guess it would be Dade Broward and Palm Beach. How did you get involved with that case? Well, as an individual who's often been prosecuted by the Florida Bar for free speech, it was a natural for Bill to turn to me. You know, I was once prosecuted by the Florida Bar for calling uh, while I was a radio talk show host for 10 years on WFDL. I, I referred to the sheriff of Broward County at the time, Nick Navarro, as a grandstanding pig who would, who would walk barefoot on hot coals to get his name in the paper. And he filed a complaint with the Florida Bar to uh, say that I was being disrespectful to a public official. And as I've told Bill Jellin, you have an obligation to be disrespectful to public officials that may be lying or stealing from the body politic, and they have a right to be investigated by journalists in any capacity, whether they happen to be a lawyer or not. So it, it was natural for Bill to turn to me. I've represented other lawyers that have criticized the Florida Bar in the past, and I've been uh, their target myself, often They've been typically been unsuccessful when they try to curtail free speech, and that's what the bar is trying to do. And ironically, just yesterday in the Sunday Chicago Sun Times, I see that the Illinois bar is doing the same thing to a lawyer there. What these institutions of power need to understand is that you have a life separate and apart from that of being a lawyer, and you do not have to be compelled to answer their questions or obligate yourself to respond to their inquiries, that they're doing what you probably learn in your civil law practice is ultra virus beyond the scope and reach of their jurisdiction. And they have no right to go up to Bill Jellin and ask him if he's authored certain columns or written certain things any more than they have a right to go up to you tomorrow and say, by the way, when you were on the air with your partner Rich on Memorial Day, did you say you were a member of the Communist Party, you just can't do that. Yeah, it, it, listen, I, I really appreciate everything you do. You've always been known as, as being an individual that'll uh, step up for the uh, the little guy, and uh, boy, is that is that needed probably now more than ever. Uh, again, I appreciate you taking the time on short notice. I'll let you get ready for the game. You have a game time prediction at uh, Dodger Stadium today? Uh, I just, you know, it's a spectacular facility, uh, 50 years old still, like Wrigley Field in Chicago. It has a rich history to it, and it's uh, a special day to be to be in California for me. But the the important thing that you you have as a radio talk show host is the ability to educate, the ability to make people more aware of their circumstances and surroundings. And there ought not to be any legal authority that's going to inhibit you. Norm, I don't know if you know this, but the name of our show is the Know Nothing Show. Now, I'm going to try to educate <laughs> once in a well, while. We don't want to lose our reputation. <laughs> that's <laughs> right. I don't want to blow that reputation, but I, I appreciate your equally kind words. I just had one question for him. Any comment about uh, our judges in uh, Broward or Palm Beach County? I think that... Uh, there are so many judges, there's over 60, and that you can't just make a generalization that applies to, to all of them, but I wish more of them over the course of three decades had been more individually courageous and not become part of an institutionalized bureaucracy that tolerated inefficiency and apathy and, uh, you know, environmentally unsound courthouses. I would have like to have seen more of them make enlightened legal decisions, but uh, over, overall, uh, we could have done better. And it, it, they need to be investigated. 
Hey, Norm, we're up against the break, man. I appreciate you coming on, and uh, let's get together one of these days, all right? And, Norm, I'd like you back on the show maybe in the next couple of weeks or next month. Well, you said that a little too late, Richard. <laughs> See you, Norm. And off to break we go. Life is so overwhelming right now. The emotional and financial challenges are too much. More debt than you can possibly handle? Facing divorce or other family law problems? Injured and don't know where to turn? Where can I get solid, affordable legal guidance? At Elkins and Friedman, an experienced lawyer will explain options and treat you with humanity. They help people throughout Central and South Florida solve these problems. This is a law firm you can trust, and they actually pick up the phone. They have a 30-year track record of positive results, and they make legal costs manageable for people from all walks of life. Make the call, 954-372-2630. When you visit, you might even meet Tiffany, the office mascot. Elkins and Friedman take the intimidation and worry out of getting the legal help you really need. Call today, 954-372-2630, and begin to make sense of your life. And we're back, everybody. And uh, Richard, I, I just soon I, we're going to get to our segment. Tell me about your ex. But before I, I do, recognizing that this is Memorial Day, sure. I ran across an article that I, I feel I have to share with everybody. Uh, please share. And that article is attention swimmers. More than half of the public pools tested in a new study contained bacterial evidence that someone may have pooped in your pool. That's very interesting. I'm so glad you brought that to my attention. Now, so because I'm having dinner right after the show. So, again, thank you very much for bringing that to my attention. But you're not going swimming, hopefully, so you should be okay. Not for a while after that announcement. <laughs> All right. Now, I understand that we that we have somebody on the, uh, the line for our, our segment, Tell Me About Your Ex. And I understand from the screen it is uh, Brandy. It looks, well, it says Brenda, but is it Brenda or Brandy? I think it's Brandy. Brandy, are you there? Going once, going twice. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, there you are. Great. How are you this evening? I'm good. You do anything interesting for Memorial Day? Spent the weekend with my son. Fishing. Oh, well, that's that's very nice. Now, how, how old is your son? Fifteen. Oh, great. Now, I assume you're calling in to talk about your uh, your uh, baby's daddy, or I should say, your <laughs> son's daddy. Yes. Yeah. All right. So, you know, we like to hear some good stuff on this show. This is my, my favorite part of the show, uh, Brandy. So what do you have to say about your ex? But keep it clean. This is a family show. <laughs> I'm not sure exactly where to start. but um, How long yeah, were you married to the guy? 26 years. Wow. Hello. And how long have you been divorced for now? Um, actually divorced for a year officially a, a, about a year and a month but it's, we've been separated a little over two, over two years now it never ends though does it brandy oh no 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 he won't stop it's one one mission after the next uh i'm constantly going back and forth to court constantly trying to keep me from seeing my kid talk to my son so yeah it's been yeah. Uh, not a pleasant experience so what would you say were, were the, uh, the main reasons that the uh, marriage didn't work out? Mostly because of just his abusiveness. He, he um, bullying, hitting, throwing, breaking things, you know, just constant abuse. And toward the end, it was going to the beginning of my marriage was a lot of physical abuse, black eyes, bloody noses, things like that. Yes. Well, I, why did, I, why'd you stay to uh, married so long? Yeah, I have kids. I really didn't have anywhere else to go. My upbringing was to be, um, you know, you married, you made a commitment, you stick with it from a religious background. And I stuck with it. And, you know, some of the years weren't bad. And then right toward the end again, we started going right back to where he had been, where he was breaking things and bullying the house. I mean, I never knew. It was like walking on eggshells all the time. Didn't know what was going to tick him off, what was going to get broke, who was going to get hit, what was going to happen next. And I realized after this many years of raising children that it was to the point where the only lesson I'm teaching my kids by staying in this marriage is that it's acceptable behavior. 
Now, Brandy, you and I actually talked before the show, and, and yeah. you actually sent me some photos, which I'm hoping our, our producer is able to go ahead and put up on the screen. Those of you that are watching ElkinsonFriedman.com can actually see those pictures, but I know that uh, the, the one of them that uh, certainly isn't something you see every day uh, is him uh, actually sticking a knife uh, into your wedding dress and I guess tacking that to the wall. Yeah, it was meticulously, it was knifed to the wall, two huge butcher knives. He literally took the time to take the train of the dress and tape it so it looked like, it would actually look like somebody was in it. And yeah. I think that's the picture there. Is that the picture? No, let's see. I know that uh, we're just starting to put up on the uh, screen there uh, a picture. I know that uh, that you sent three of them. One was the uh, the wedding dress. I know another was apparently he did something to your... Oh, there's a wedding dress oh, right now. I'm yep. looking at it. So, I mean, set the circumstances for us. How does that actually happen? How, how do you actually get to that where, you, where he says, hey, honey, come up and take a look at... At the uh, at your wedding dress, what actually happened? If it's not too <laughs> that, painful I, to relive, no, I, no. I was at work actually, and I got a call from him and said, "You need to come home and help me clean up the house now." And I could tell something was wrong because I was one of those "I better not go home" deals. <laughs> yeah. So I actually was escorted by the police. I called them, and I, you know, after long thinking, and, and I'm kind of on the naive side, so but I picked up on that one. So walking in the front door, he had actually left. I'd waited about an hour and a half before I went back to the house. And when I walked in, I opened up the front door, and the first thing I saw was my wedding dress taped. I mean, literally knifed to the wall. And if you look close, you'll see his blood. He dripped his own blood down the back of it. Yeah, I, actually, I do see some blood on yeah. the dress. Did, so, the, did the police see that? Yes, they did. They made me take several pictures of that. Hey, yeah. Did they arrest him? No. Mm. No, there, there's nothing they could they, they couldn't arrest him. They, he didn't do anything to me. He was in his own house, and that's you know there was nothing. He destroyed my vehicle. Nothing he could do because you know he was part owner of the vehicle as well. He could well, that's the next car. picture that I have. Was this yeah. was this all one act after the dress and he destroyed the car? Is this on another occasion? No, this was all the pictures I sent you today was all in one, that was one blowout, one evening of him just going at it, and he destroyed the vehicle, he poured acid and bleach inside the interior of it, he um, busted out every window of the vehicle, and he took a crowbar and, and busted, you know, dented it all up. Hey, let me ask you, the, the, had he ever been arrested, had he committed any acts like this prior to this act having been committed? Yeah, he's done things like this all most of his life. All I mean, throughout my marriage, like I said, it was a mm. situation where I just it was easier to be quiet and let him have his fit than it was to do anything about it because he didn't want to be in the line of fire when he decided to go off. So, you know that, and then he destroyed the bedroom. And I'm going to say about a month before he did that, like I said, his behavior was getting real bizarre. He had six o'clock in the morning I'm drinking coffee in my living in my living room and I hear a gunshot go off in my bedroom All right. and I Did got up and I walked into the bedroom mm -hmm. and I'm looking around and I'm just drinking my coffee and I'm like did you just shoot a gun in the house and yes I did did you apply Why? for an injunction did you go to the courthouse and Go to the clerk's I did office. Eventually, about a month after the fire, um, after he shot the the firearm off in the house, yeah, I finally decided that it was time for me to get an injunction. I do have an injunction in place, and it is permanent. I still have it. He's fighting me once it dropped, and I really don't. I don't feel that it should be dropped. Yeah, nor so. nor should it be dropped. And now we're looking at, at finally the uh, last photograph, what is that? where it looks like some furniture was destroyed in the house. Yeah. That was a regular occasion for him to destroy things in the house. That was an exceptional mess. But for him to pick up a chair and bust it, um, I've been in the house. He picked up a, a stool and threw a stool through our, you know, a little stool that you'd sit at the counter, our bar, uh, you know, and he threw it through the big screen TV one day because somebody was talking while he was watching Survivor. Wow. Is that where they so, interrupt the Survivor? So it doesn't look like it takes much to provoke him. No. <laughs> I think really. it's fair to say he's quite the nut, and you're glad to be away from him. Oh, most definitely. My life is so much more peaceful now. I know peace. I don't have anxiety. I don't have drama. The only drama that I have is when he starts, you know, one of his little issues and drives me back to court or doesn't bring my son to my drop-off pickup or whatever like that. He still plays with me. 
whenever well, he can. He tries to... Well, what to, kind of time-sharing arrangement do you have with him? Unfortunately, right now, because I put too much distance between me and him to get away from him, um, he ended up, believe it or not, I don't know how, but he ended up with my kids. So he's got him, and I get my son every other weekend because I'm farther than 50 miles away from the house. Okay, you relocated. I did. Okay. Yeah. Well, but, but how are the children handling this? My son, none of the, you know what, honestly, I've realized that what I did by Sting is I've taught them to tolerate, and that's what they're all doing. They're just basically tolerating behavior. They'll talk to, they're talking to me, and they'll tell me on the back side what's going on, and they don't know what to do about it, or they just, you know, are quiet, go to their room, and then only speak when spoken to, and, you know, my 15-year-old's pretty much going through the same thing right now. He's He's finally getting to the point where he said, you know, if this would all happen two years ago, Mom, and if I had known now what I knew, you know, if I had understood things better, I would have chosen to go with you, then stay there. But he's staying where he's at because he's staying in the same school, has the same friends and things like that. So he stays, but, yeah, his life isn't easy. So basically wow. you're saying you had to make the choice of either moving far enough away from this nutcase or having been there and, and uh, fearing for your for your safety. It's unfortunate. Yeah, from- yeah, absolutely. I, I had to, I left my job. I lost everything. I just I had to go. And for me being um, away, it also gave the kids some kind of peace as well because he got what he wanted. Well, listen, uh, taking enough of your time, um, I feel yeah. uh, I feel I feel badly for you. But hopefully, things are improving. You're in a better place now, and you're happier than you were at least when you were married to this character. I am very happy now. It was the best thing I ever did. I wish I'd have done it sooner. Honestly, I do. I, I, you know, it's the torment of my children. That's the thing that draws me back. But beyond that, I've, I'm actually moved on. I'm in another relationship, and I actually have a normal relationship. I understand what that is now, and it took me a long time to actually grasp that. I never really understood it. Look, I, I really applaud you. Thanks for having the courage to call in to us. And uh, keep listening, and uh, maybe you'll call back uh, one day with a happier story. Right. Yeah, thanks for sharing that story with us. Uh, very interesting, and I'm sure our listeners got a lot out of that and learned something. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, Richard, uh, boy, I tell you, this has uh, been a sobering show. I, I mean, know. It really Have you ever has... heard of stories like that before in your practice? Uh, yeah, they're, they're unfortunately way too common. Yeah. And, uh, I've had the same thing. People come in, I mean, it's, you almost want to cry sometimes. You know, it's interesting because I debated whether or not I'd bring up one last story that was in the, uh, the news this past week, and it's kind of along the lines of what Brandy just told us. Okay. And this is a Florida story. And, and the title of the story i'll just read it because you can't make it up okay woman stabs boyfriend after he farts in her face during an argument so what can i say and what's this world coming to i don't know it says a drunken florida woman stabbed her boyfriend with an eight inch blade after he farted in her face during an argument Says she allegedly uh, knifed her lover of six years as they watched television in their Immokalee apartment last week. So I think the, the, the moral of the story is, Richard, I, I guess is to, to uh, not pass wind in your spouse's face. Little Beano might be helpful on that right. occasion. And if you are inclined to do that, there better not be any sharp knives or instruments anywhere near you. I hope they prosecute that woman for uh, that type of behavior. Yeah, well, I certainly, uh, I certainly hope so. So, all like you'd never do that to your wife, would no, you? And I'm sure you wouldn't have done that to any of your wives. <laughs> no, no, but they've done it to me on more than one occasion. I'm I? sure. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I think they, she called it a Dutch oven. <laughs> Well, Richard, we've had much too, uh, too, much, too yes. much fun uh, this evening. We're about to wrap up our first month of uh, shows. I and think it's gone pretty well, and our audience keeps growing every, uh, every week, so I'm looking forward to uh, continuing on with our programs. Audience, if you're out there, uh, feel free to give us a call. Handle your legal needs. We're Elkins and Friedman, elkinsandfriedman.com. Have a good evening, everybody. Thank you. you good night, everyone. hearing Elkins and Friedman's Know Nothing Show where maybe you learned a little something today. To reach their offices, call 954-772-6014 or 561-738-5988. Out of area, call 800-922-1277. And tune in again next time for more Elkins and Friedman.
The opinions expressed on the preceding sponsored program were strictly those of its hosts, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of this station, its staff, management, or sponsors. Life is so overwhelming right now. The emotional and financial challenges are too much. More debt?